Hello everyone, I'm Dahlia. I was looking at some artworks at the National Gallery Singapore and I was very inspired by one artwork. It was created by local sculptor Ng Eng Ting. He titled this artwork Silver Cloud. Now, let's create our own three-dimensional mountainscape. I will introduce the materials that you will need. If you have clay modeling tools, use them. Otherwise, we can find substitutes which can work as well. I will show you later on in this video. At the art store, you can find non-toxic clay. Grab the air dry types. They can be found in different colors. If you do not have clay modeling tools, it's okay. You can use a small metal spoon and toothpicks. You will need an airtight container, a metal ruler, and you may want to have a rag and water nearby to wipe your hands as you work with the clay. To prepare for your workstation, line the table with a table mat or any recycled plastic sheets, files, folders or the back of your cutting mat. The best tool to use to flatten clay evenly is by using the wooden rolling pin normally used for baking. If you don't have that at home, you can use any thick and sturdy glass bottle that's straight. Or you can also use the hard cardboard core of aluminium foil. This is a good one because it is long and sturdy. Let's start. I'm using the white clay. Divide it into two parts using a metal ruler and I'm keeping half in the airtight container so that it doesn't dry up while I work on the other half. Then place the two long pencils on each side of the clay so that we can start rolling the clay flat and even. Gently roll your bottle forwards and backwards. Keep checking the thickness of the clay, ensuring that the length of the bottle remain on the two pencils to achieve an even thickness. You can roll on the clay directly or place a plastic sheet over the clay to keep your rolling pin clean. This plastic will help greatly if you are using the cardboard core as a rolling pin because you would want to keep it dry. I've used both halves of the clay. Each slab is the thickness of the pencils. If you are a beginner, you can start with something thicker so that it is sturdier and easier to manage. Now I'm going to stack both slabs together so that we can cut both at the same time. To cut the clay, you can use a modeling tool or a small metal spoon from the kitchen. Make some sketches on paper first. Use basic shapes to create a design and place it near you. Draw out the main shape onto the clay using a toothpick. Draw it lightly and you can redraw on the clay till you settle for the shape that you want. Small details can be added later, so you do not need to draw those on the clay now. After drawing, cut the shape out using a clay modeling tool. To cut a straight line, use the metal ruler. For cutting shapes, actually you can also use the handle of the metal spoon, this will work very well too. Excess clay can be placed in the airtight container so that it keeps its moisture and not dry up. You can smoothen the uneven edges of your clay with a little bit of water on your fingertips. You can do the same when you see your clay pieces drying up. After that, place them in the airtight container until you need them later so that they don't dry up. Since this sculpture is freestanding, we need to add support under the clay to keep its shape while working on it. So put the top layer aside while we create the support. I have crumpled pieces of newspaper and use masking tape to secure the shapes. And with the newspaper inside, the base will be open 
so that it can stand while we attach the top part of the clay together. To attach the edges, we need to score the surface of the clay. Before you scratch the on the clay, add a little bit of water on the surface. This acts like the glue. With a toothpick, score on the surface of the edges where you want to join them. You can do cross hatching. Well, the idea is to roughen the surface so that the edges will stick together. Score on both surfaces where you want them to join. This is to ensure good sticking. Okay, after scoring both edges, pinch and press the edges firmly together. Once the edges are pinched firmly together, let's stand it upright. The bag is now still rather flat with a slight curve due to the newspaper stuffing underneath. I'm going to shape it, giving it a more three-dimensional form for the bag as well as the front. The edges need to be blended more to make sure they stick together and not fall apart. I hope you have enjoyed making art with clay today. When you can, do come down to the National Gallery Singapore and be inspired by all the other clay works done by our local artists. Mm -hmm.